Welcome to New Thinking for a New World, a Tilburg Foundation podcast. I am Alan Stoga, your host. Each week, I bring you conversations with people who think differently about the great issues that are shaping our world. Geopolitics, disruptive tech, mass migration, the changing climate, culture wars, all of it is grist for our mill. I hope you enjoy listening. I also hope you will let me know what you think and that you join the conversation at telbergfoundation.org. And now for today's episode of New Thinking for a New World. Why shouldn't we cry for Argentina? The country's inflation rate is approaching 150%. 40% of its people live in poverty. The currency is practically worthless. And debt default is a well-established habit. But unlike any other country in the world with that profile, Argentina is blessed with a dynamic, well-educated population, an innovative, world-class tech sector, robust natural resources, and world-leading exports of wheat, soybeans, and meat. Never mind fabulous wine. The problem isn't Argentina. The problem is Argentine politicians who just can't seem to deliver positive outcomes for their people. So it should not be surprising that Argentine voters just opted to try something radically different by electing as president a self-described anarcho-capitalist libertarian economist, whatever all that means. I'm confident my guest today can translate for us. Eduardo Amadeo is an Argentine economist, businessman, social entrepreneur, and one of that country's rare politicians who has actually produced positive results over the course of his long effort to make Argentina a better place. Welcome, Eduardo, to New Thinking for New World. Hi, Alan. How do you do? I am well. Let's start with this anarcho-capitalist stuff. Javier Millet will take office on December 10th. Who is he? Or maybe I should ask, what is he? He's, he's one of the new kind of politicians that are, uh, are appearing everywhere in the world. I mean, people giving ideas, uh, that, that, that are out of the, of the, of the usual rules of, of, of politics. I mean, in, in, in very many countries, you, you see this type of people who are in the extremes of, of politics. He, he's, a libertarian. I don't know what it really means, but for him, liberty in every field is the key of his uh, political thinking. Uh, no control at all. Almost, he almost says that the state has to disappear. For example, one of his ideas that now he's leaving aside is to close the central bank. No one has the right to control the flows of money. Things of that sort. Liberty in every field. And with this speech, he has been successful. He has uh, got about 50% of votes. It means that people are fed up with a number of things, among others, the role of state in Argentina that controls everything. I mean, not everything. We are not a socialist country, definitely. But on your daily life, from from the, the, the exchange rate, up to the prices of gasoline, uh, the rules to invest. You cannot invest freely. You always need the help, the control, or the support of the state for anything you do. And the results have been awful, as you can see. I mean, we have a problem of flow, but a problem of stock. Uh, uh, Argentina's uh, uh, poverty rate has been in these levels from the last you know, 30 years. So... People are fed up. I would say that this is the definition of people. People are fed up with classical politics, with classical, typical politicians, with the role of states, etc. And from that uh, point, uh, Milei has been very effective. Now, we, we will probably talk during the conversation about his, his proposals. He's leaving aside some of his mad proposals like the one of the central bank. Before we get there, one of the things about the kind of outsider's election that we just saw, where he beat the caricature of the establishment, the caricature of Peronism, caricature of failed government, is that as soon as that kind of radical is elected, everybody starts to say, yes, he won. 
but he can't govern the way that he campaigned. He has to change. And that's already started uh, in these few days between the election and his inauguration on December 10th. So, so let's stay there for a second. Uh, you already said he's left aside some of his mad proposals, but it was exactly his madness that got him elected. How, how do you square that circle? People vote him not for his specific proposals, but for the mood, the general mood of his proposal. Get, get rid of these politicians. I don't know whether cast, cast, C-A-S-T, is a word in English. I mean, these are sort of political class that handles everything, thieves. They steal all the time. They work on their own benefit. Let's get rid of these guys. And let's change completely the, the characters, the people who run politi politics in, in Argentina. Uh, so I, I wouldn't say that people vote him because he said that he was going to close the central bank. But it smells like a change. And, and people vote for that smell of new times. Now he is changing that. Uh, he's leaving aside some of the things that he said. For, him, for example, he said that he would never talk with President Lula in Brazil because he's a communist and he's a corrupt. corrupt. Now he's going to see Lula. Uh, he, he left that. He's getting more uh, by the, he's now going by the rules, by the rules. Another interesting point is that he appointed as his right hand, the minister, minister of the interior, which in Argentina is very important, a classical politician, a typical classical politician, which I know very well, the type of guy who loves uh, drinking coffee while talking and hearing you and talking with everyone, etc which is really a great advance in terms of his need for political agreement in the Congress, because he does not have all the strength in the, in the Congress that he needs. I want to talk about the Congress. I want to talk about policies. But I first want to talk about authenticity. Because again, the challenge for someone like Millet typically is to maintain his authenticity as an outsider, but to become effective. People want change. They voted for change. Can he deliver? He will stay authentic. I think that really he knows, he, he has the consciousness that this is his main asset. This is his main asset in his gestures, daily gestures, etc. So the point is he has, we have very serious problems in terms of figures. You know, you cannot... Uh, handle the, the manage the government with this level of inflation. The the, the exchange rate it's it's clearly undervalued. Uh, the, the gasoline uh, costs zero, and therefore there will be shortage of of gasoline, and that sort of of problems. So the main uh, the main challenge that he has is to, is to restructure relative prices, and this means that there will be social unrest, social unrest in, in, in Argentina. And, uh, and uh, that will cost him uh, in terms of popularity. For me, his, his most difficult challenge is to obtain, he must obtain support of the Congress for not only for these short-term decisions, but also for long-term. He, he will send a... Uh, uh, a, a law transforming education in Argentina. Uh, Argentina was a country with good human resources. It's no longer. So we have to change completely the, the education, health. Uh, there are a number of laws that limit the freedom of the entrepreneurs to hire people. So in Argentina, there are 7 million people working in the black market. They cannot enter uh, companies. So he has to solve short-term problems while showing that there will be structural changes and also with uh, the management of the public sector, etc. So that, that's the problem. Shall he be able to do both things together at the same time, showing that he will really change Argentina in its structure and also in the, in the short-term limit restrictions that that's congress that's congress that's governors 
And that's why he must uh, develop strong, solid uh, relationships with the political apparatus that he, he does not like. At the same time that he does not like the political system, he needs it to go ahead with his reforms. As you've just implied, there are two problems with shock therapy. One is that in democracies, you can't do it by yourself. So you need allies to make it happen. And he's a man by himself. He has no party. It's a made up party with almost no representation. Yes. So you need to attract allies. And the other problem with shock therapy is if you don't do it, if it's not shocking, it doesn't work. So how does he solve the Congress problem? And how does he solve the need to shock? Shock has to shock or it doesn't work. Let me add as an introduction that we need the IMF. Definitely, we need the IMF. And the IMF, being diplomat, uh, says that we need some changes. <laughs> some <laughs> changes. <laughs> we, we have worked together in my previous life on those type of uh, small changes that the IMF requests. What, what insertion? We should tell the audience that you're working, Argentina is working on, I think it's its 22nd IMF program, which is either world record or second to Pakistan. I'm not sure which. Yes. Yeah, so uh, IMF is sitting in the Congress <laughs> there waiting, and we need that. But going to your question, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Uh, he has very few uh, members, but we, uh, the previous opposition, the pro, have the number to help him. And also the governors have uh, can add uh, numbers. If you are smar smart enough, you can vote by blocks. First, in the structural aspects, you will have votes from the provinces that produce oil and mining, and they will accompany you on those reforms. Other governors will accompany, will go with you on education reforms because they are fed up with the unions. You, you must, you will not have one massive support, but you can get support by areas and by zones. Other, other provinces desperately need to improve their position vis-a-vis -vis international markets because they have debt, debts in dollars. So if there's more if, if, if you can predict what's going to happen with the markets, they will be able to pay their debts. So it's a very complicated subject by subject, law by law uh, technology, but it can be done because the Peronistas are, from that perspective, the Peronistas are a, min a minority. The problem, though, is that you've just described a very sophisticated political strategy and Millet is a newbie. He doesn't have that, that experience of dealing with the complexity of Argentine politics, and God knows it's complex. Who's going to be his Sherpa with all this? Now, his first appointments are very positive on that perspective. As I mentioned, you, the Minister of the Interior, but also Mauricio Macri, the former president, is key on this. Mauricio Macri is definitely... Uh, I mean, working with, with him, uh, supporting him. Ma uh, Millet respects Mauricio Macri and also Patricia Bullrich, and he's asking them for support. So he has left aside his original MAD proposals. Uh, uh, he has, in a certain moment, insulted people like Patricia, saying that they were part of the old uh, class of politicians, etc. That's over. That's over. Uh, so Mauricio is going to support. He's, he's getting step-by-step -step support from the traditional politicians. Yesterday, there was a meeting of governors, we are all, who are most of them part of the old political class, and they were received. Uh, they talked, summarizing, he has changed his approach towards the political class that he did not like, to say the least, and now he's, he's using the, uh, the votes and the, and the experience of the old, old politicians to go ahead. We should probably inject here that uh, Patricio Bullich was the candidate who came in third in the first round of the elections, and then much to almost everyone's surprise, 
through her support to Millet and arguably is why he's president elect, soon to be president. Yes. Uh, because of that support. So presumably earned a lot of credit in, in, in with with the president elect uh, and has opened up this space to be as supportive as you just described. Yes, definitely. And we are also working. I mean, the technical areas, we are working together. Uh, now we are discussing places in the cabinet, etc. And that, that that's really running well, much better than what we expected before. I mean, the whole mood of this conversation was, uh, shall Millet be the same all through his life? If, if that were the case, uh, I wouldn't be sure that Millet could succeed. But now I think that he has changed the mood. He has changed the approach. He respects all politicians, which he, before he said he wouldn't. And that, that's giving him uh, better chances of uh, success. Thanks for listening so far. I hope you're enjoying the conversation as much as I have. If you haven't already, please subscribe on the platform of your choice and rate us on Apple Podcast. Now back to today's discussion, sponsored by the Stavros Niarchus Foundation, SNF. So let's talk about shock therapy. When President Macri came to office, you faced, and you were part of that movement, you faced incredibly difficult problems that look sort of like these problems, in fact. Um, but the decision was made to execute a, a different kind of shock, but execute it gradually. Some up front and then after the next round of elections, more and so forth. Uh, that didn't work as well as you had hoped it would work. And now we are where we are. Do you think the country needs a big shock uh, now to, in fact, break the back of, of the dysfunctional economy that clearly doesn't want to go away. One of the mistakes that we made at that time, and at that time I was chairman of the finance committee in the Congress, so I was part of the mistake, was uh, that we said, people, don't be afraid. We can make it. It's not that serious. We will succeed. We have muscle to do it. And unfortunately, it was too too serious. <laughs> and so people did not give us the support that we needed. Millet is changing changing that, that mood of that speech. He says it's going to be hard, but it's going to be hard for a while. And basically, what means hard? He's not going to touch political assi uh, social assistance. In, can in Argentina, there are, there are 7 million people who eat every day using uh, money from the, from the state. And that's not going to be touched. But we have to uh, increase the prices of gasoline, uh, transportation, et cetera, et cetera. There will be also, uh, we, ha we have to free the dollar, the dollar. I mean, the dollar that we, we use for our imports is now 50% of the real value of the dollar. So you have to free that. And that means that the prices of the, of the, uh, everything that depends on imports will increase uh, heavily. Th that's the main challenge. And the, the only, I mean, the main tool that, that, that uh, Millet has for that is hope. People ha must accept that this is a n necessary movement, but that will change their life forever. This is a badly needed uh, adjustment, and that's positive, and, people and the country needs that to stop inflation, while at the same time it will increase inflation because when you adjust those relative, relative price, there will be more inflation. Technically, it's feasible. Technically, it's feasible. You put that in a paper and a pen and it's feasible. The question, your key question is right. Shall people afford that? Shall people support that? I hope. <laughs> A couple specifics. He talked a lot during the campaign, and it's almost his signature policy about getting rid of the peso and converting the economy to dollars. He's talked about it less since his election. Do you think it is still on the agenda? No, it's not feasible for very many reasons. 
one of them that in order to make dollarization work, you need dollars. I mean, you have to change bills. I have no anyone here, but you, you, you must change your bills in pesos for a billion. Who gives you the bills in, in dollars? I mean, you, you, you need 50 billion uh, bills. And who's going to give you that? Are you going to take that in the, in the, in the, mar- in the market? No, no one wants to lend it to Argentina. One. Second, there is a more structural problem. Dollarization works in very simple economies like Panama, Ecuador, who, who, who export three products. We are a very complex economy, and we cannot afford losing any control of the problem for, on international prices. So that, that one won't work. But it was very smart by Millet to offer dollarization as a potential miracle. You know, people saying, I won't have any more those pesos that are worth nothing. I will have a dollar that will give me the chance to save, to invest, etc. But in fact, uh, that, that's, that's not, it's not feasible. That's not feasible. Another proposal during the campaign was a dramatic cut in government spending. Yes. I'm going to get the numbers wrong, I suspect. But last I checked, government spending was something like 40 percent of GDP. And he wants to cut almost more than a third of that as soon as possible. Is that kind of huge? And that is shock. That would be shock therapy to some parts of the economy. Is that possible? A part, I would say, I would say that a third of that is feasible immediately. Uh, political expenditures transferred to provinces only for political reasons, etc. That can be done. Another part can be done step by step. For example, um, so uh, la jubilaciones, the um, the retirement. Uh, uh, in Argentina, all that market is is state owned. That we we have no private. Uh, retirement funds. So that has to be adjusted, but it cannot be immediately. And also an, a part of the public expenditure has to do with fa- has to do with financing the debt of the of the of the government. So as long as we can succeed on reducing debt in general or obtaining better conditions for, for managing the debt. And now Argentina pays anything. I mean, Argentina can pay 20% a month in, in dollar terms for, for the money. You can reduce that. So again, it's not from today to uh, that for tomorrow, uh, step by step. Uh, some of them can be done really and can be shown. The other parts will have to do also with, uh, uh, if you are, if you succeed in stabilizing the economy, the prices for the state will reduce, the interest rates will be reduced, and then it will work. But no, it cannot be done for tomorrow. Another aspect of his proposals is to privatize uh, some of the enterprises that are owned by the, by the government, including YPF, the oil company. Yes. Which I assume requires congressional approval. Uh, but clearly would be part of this dramatic transformation, as you talked earlier, of an overly large, overly intrusive state. Do you think that can get done? Yes, it can be done. It can be done, not instantaneously. You know, the, the, uh, the, 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 the airline, the, the state airline, Aerolíneas Argentina, uh, costs us $8 billion a year deficit. It's the only... Uh, state owned uh, there are almost no state owned uh, airlines in the world and the and the only one in latin america has, has that's caused that that madness uh, ypf if well managed can stay in state it's an open discussion it's clearly an an open discussion uh, there are a number of minor uh, state owned companies that will surely be uh, privatized for for just to show the the, the the decision of the of the COVID. but let me let me give you a couple of good news. All the good political analysis for this coming year show that we will have a surplus of something like twenty to twenty five current accounts, 
surplus between 20 and 25 billion dollars for a number of reasons uh, agriculture, mining, and energy. Argentina is becoming. Just one caveat. When you say current account surplus, you're talking about the external surplus. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Uh, Argentina is becoming one of the largest exporters of gas. We have the third largest reserve of gas and oil in the world. Uh, basically, basically gas, gas in a place called Vaca Muerta. We are becoming really a massive exporter of, of, of gas. So those 20 to 25 billion dollars are an asset that you can use for a number of, of uh, purposes. To, to renegotiate your, your debt, to get additional credit if you need, et cetera, et cetera. So from this perspective, I'm, I'm optimistic. I think that we can, we, if, uh, we, we, we have assets to, 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 to support some of the reforms, in particular, some of the macro, macro reforms. So that, that, that's something good that can be expected for the coming year. So far, we've talked mostly about economics, uh, and that's because that is the big problem sitting there that has to be solved. But President-elect Millet is a libertarian, and he does think about social policies, uh, allegedly opposes abortion, um, opposes gun control. As you said earlier, anything that's controlled, his gut instinct is to decontrol. Yes. Those are the kinds of policies in many countries that can derail support in other areas. Uh, yes. Yeah. Same question as in economics. How aggressively do you expect him to move on some of these social or even cultural issues like abortion, like gun control, and so on? He has left aside, he has abandoned some of the things that he said during the campaign. Clearly, gun control. I, you did not mention, for me, the worst of them which is the, the market for, is that a word in English, at organs? You can, you can sell your kidney. That was simply mad. And it has to do with, with uh, the ideas of an economist that he follows very closely, a gentleman called Rothbard, uh, who is a, a real libertarian, who says, I mean, there has to be markets for everything. If you need a kidney, go and buy it. If you need a heart, go and buy it. Why? Uh, that's that's over. I mean, the the churches, uh, uh, etc., have opposed it, and I think also with the with the gun uh, control. No, I mean, the, the Argentina has a serious uh, crime problem, and that that would be that it would be hard to implement that that, that markets. So some of those things have been left uh, aside. Abortion, uh, we have a law. And the country is clearly divided, like in most countries. So I think it would be it would not be wise to open again the, the the discussion. You would have thousands of people in the streets, as it happened when I was member of the Congress, uh, pro and against. I I do not think he will open that discussion, at least now, because now he has another other priorities. You cannot add to the problems of inflation, energy costs, transport costs, et cetera, the problem of abortion. It would not be wise. So I could not tell you. The other one, organs and, 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 and guns, forget. Abortion depends on, it's, it's a matter of being prudent enough, uh, smart enough. He, he really thinks on that terms. He's very religious. He just went to New York to visit the tombstone of a of a rabbi uh, that he follows very closely. He has a, a, a religious approach to life, but I don't think he will he will do it now. Let me end with this. Uh, Eduardo, you have an enormous catalog of experience with Argentine governments over decades, good, bad, and ugly. You're also a patriot who wants the best for his country. As Malay takes office, what is your biggest fear? First, the support of people. Shall people be supportive of him? Shall people trust him? Because the, the word in Argentina is trust. We have a, an enormous flow of emigration, my case, two of my five 
kids are, have, lived, have left, a grandson. I mean, we all are sur surrounded. It's not like you. I mean, in the U.S., going to, the, to California from New York or going to Berlin or whatever is part of your daily life is not our case. But yeah, you, the youth, it's emigrated massively because there's no future. I mean, here in Argentina, there's no way, definitely no way to have credit to buy a house in, on a 30-year credit basis. No, it does not exist. So there's no future in Argentina. That's why our, our kids are leaving, because there's no, 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 no future. If Millet can, if people believe that he's generating future, I know what is the word in English, but generating future, uh, he will succeed. It's a very, he has a very short path uh, that people believe that he can really generate a better, a better future, he will succeed. For that, he needs political support, smart enough in the decisions. At the beginning, I would give him 30% chances. Now I'm giving him 70% chances, which is, uh, I think, very good. <laughs> In Argentina, that is excellent. In any country, that would be excellent. So let's let's stay, let's end there with that that sense of optimism and hope. Seventy percent chance of succeeding in a very difficult world. Yes, Eduardo Fidel, thank you very much for this explanation of what an anarcho capitalist is, or, or what he might be, <laughs> given the challenges he faced. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for listening to this episode of New Thinking for New World. I'm Alan Stoga, podcast host, and I look forward to your joining our next conversation. Remember, tell us what you think at telbergfoundation.org.